Hello everybody, I hope you are well. Now first of all, I must apologise for the, uh, the slightly annoying <laughs> background noise in this introduction. We are right in the middle of cicada season here in New Zealand and as you can hear them squawking away, rubbing bits of themselves together and it makes a very high pitch, very penetrating sound and there's absolutely nothing we can do about it apart from maybe record this at night and uh, we don't have enough lights for that. So anyway, moving on quickly, today's video is from Cameron Hurst Shifu, our uh, seven star northern praying mantis expert. At summer camp this year, he took some time to tell us all about how his art came about, the development of it, a little bit of its history, and he also set up the class to start teaching us one of their, their fundamental kata, if you like, um, the kishu or the seven hands kata. This was absolutely fascinating viewing and at the end of this clip we've just put in uh, Cameron showing us a demonstration of the kata done as a solo one person movement. In the next couple of videos we'll break it down and we'll show you how he taught each of the individual movements within this kata. It's fascinating stuff. I hope you enjoy this. If you do smash the like, the normal stuff and enjoy the clip. don't know who I am, my name is Cameron, Cameron Hurst, and I teach Seven Star Brain Mantis, or Northern uh, Brain Mantis. There's actually a Southern Brain Mantis, so don't get confused between the two. The Seven Star system originates out of the Shandong province, which was about halfway between Beijing and Shanghai, if you're familiar with China. Traces back to the Shaolin Temple, which most people have heard of. And our system specifically was popularized by the Jingwu School in Shanghai. So you, you might have seen some of the movies with Bruce Lee and there's one with Jet Li, kind of, um, I guess, trying to show the, the glory of the Jingwu School. And that was a school set up around 19, uh, it was early 1900s, I can't remember exactly, maybe 1912? And originally it was a man called Koyanja who tried to set up the school and it was a part of a way to kind of bring back some pride to the Chinese people because they were kind of thought in a bad way at that time. And their idea was to make the martial arts open to the public because before that it was very much passed down through family. So they set up the school and they invited several masters from around China and one of these masters was a teacher from Shandong teaching Seven Star Prey Mantis. He came down and the Jingwu school then spread around China and through Asia and that's how the Seven Star style actually kind of spread I guess throughout the world because from there they had people teaching in uh, obviously in Shanghai, then you had southern China, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, um, I think all the way to you know, Vietnam and all these other places. So that really helped the style. Along with that, some of the well-known students wrote books about the style. And so there's, there's probably about, or in his kind of catalogue of books, I think he wrote about 50 books. Um, printed in Hong Kong, so there's a lot of kind of documentation about the style, and that's that's actually helped a lot um, to to I guess sometimes fill the gaps in people's knowledge, which can be dangerous, but also just to allow people to see I guess the structure of the style and what it's about and some of the history. Our system um, is a traditional Chinese martial arts system, so it's similar to a lot of the other Shaolin systems, and what I guess what makes the, the Chinese martial arts um, not unique, but the, the way they break it down is something we're going to talk about today is the four striking forces. And it's pretty simple stuff, really. So you've got the hitting or punching, everyone knows about that. You've got your kicking, you've got your uh, throws and then you've got your joint locking. So this is called the, the, the four striking methods or the four uh, attacking methods, I guess you would call it. In Chinese, it's si fa. 
and you might have something similar in the Japanese arts, like some sort of word for it, I'm not sure. So we're going to use that today as a bit of a backbone to look at what we're learning. So we're going to try and identify one of those four components in a form, or what you would call a kata. And this kata is actually a two-person kata. Okay, so we're just going to first learn the movements as a single person. Then we're going to learn the two-person application. And then from there, we're just going to pick one from each of those four striking methods just to kind of, I guess, understand them a bit better and look at some variations. And then hopefully from that, you can take away some of the ideas of what we're trying to do in our Seven Star Praying Mantis and how that fits with what you already know and how you would do it in Aikido or whatever art you you study. Alright, so this kata is actually, it's not very long, it's called Seven Hands, Chisho, and that hand refers to techniques. So it's essentially seven techniques in a row, um, there's more than seven movements, but there's seven main techniques. Alright, and you can practice this as a single person kata, so you can practice it by yourself, or you can practice it as the two-person, what we call dweida, the two-person, um, I guess, application form. Now, this form does have some different variations, so the one we're going to learn today is uh, the earliest one that I learned, which is, I guess, maybe a little bit more simple than you might see in some of the other branches of our system, um, but not much, it's just some variations on the moves. And we consider this form more of a training form. So we use this as a training technique as opposed to a more standard traditional kata. Because most of our kata are going to be uh, three to four times as long as this kata. So when, from a seven star praying mantis point of view, when we see this kata, we know that it's not a, a standard kata, but it's a good um, way to cover the kata, learn about kata, how we do kata, and also the two-person application slash drill, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so I'll just show you what we're going to do today. Thank you. 